and we find out <clears throat> one uh, uh, one really specific spirit which is uh, coming against us in this season and I want to share this with you so you can be ready you can be prepared if you meet with this spirit uh, because I feel like which is attacking right now us uh, prophet Tommy has a word even for this month that the enemy will try to accuse the saints the enemy will try to come against the saints and give any kind of clue idea feeling sensation that oh you know this person like that uh that person like this and you have the right to just leave you have the right to just be offended you have the right just to be to the corner and and just cry you know feel you feel yourself pity or yeah just you know just have some time with yourself because you know the way how is things are happening nobody's watching you listening you so that's the kind of season we're finding out we're stepping in but let me start with prayer jesus jesus i love you so much i love your presence jesus and i when i'm see these faces oh lord i praise you because you kept these people there is no demon on this earth on the on the on the skies which can take these people away lord because they we have a connection of not just a heart but a spirit connection and lord i praising you i feel that joy lord when you said when you were watching the disciples and you had the joy because you said lord my father you hide them and you handled it to me i feel the same joy jesus you handle these people to me no matter what happens no matter the weather and no matter the circumstances even war nothing can stop us to love each other because we had a covenant jesus and this covenant says we do it together we do it by supporting each other so and lord i just praise you i just praise you all of the people who's here right now and lord i am releasing reward because i am sitting as the scripture said in, in at your right hand my father and from there any good comes uh, to the earth is coming from that realm so right now i'm prophesying reward for these people over their life whoever is here right now Lord, reward them because they choose to come. They choose you instead of anything else. So, Lord, I praise you for them. And I, I feel the love towards the, uh, from the Spirit towards them, Lord. I just praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, can I go back to 1996-7? That's where I want to start. So imagine if we, starting there, reach 2024, you will sit here with me today. <laughs> so, right. So, when I was, uh, so, okay. So, when I became Christian, I was 16. And thanks God, we entered, I entered to the church when, when <clears throat> prophets, uh, I have a pastor who was a prophet. He didn't really, really know. He didn't have the language. He didn't have the material to, to study. Uh, remember during communism, all you have is a Bible and a Catholic uh, a book. So you, you have the sing songs, but you don't have any material. So we didn't know what's happening with us. We just know the Lord is there. I My pastor was a prophet. So now he had word of knowledge. He has word of wisdom. He has open vision. In the church, we all had kind of crazy experiences experiences we had no internet but Hungary started to know the small village where we are and what, what the Lord does be, uh, among us but uh, as I'm 16 17 years old uh, you know my pastor was my hero so he that man I watched him and I loved him I was sometimes watching and uh, I was oh my god this man is even so handsome I love him so much you know as, as a young boy I was really in in a 
kind of spiritual love with this man and I was doing everything for him and the testimonies around him, healings, casting out demons. I was 17 years old. Sometimes when dark came, I was scared to go home. I was running sometimes because I see manifestation and all these demons. And I, I was always a bit scared of this on that age. So I was sometimes running home and quickly turn on the light because, you know, what the things that I see. There was a woman, she was teen, and we were holding like three or four of us men. And she was that strong that we were like, where is this power coming? And, you know, anyways, it's a long story. You, I think you all see or experienced at some level. So now um, we are, my, our pastor is my, my hero, uh, you know, and I really look up uh, on him as a man of God. And I have a best friend on that time in church. Uh, and uh, we both went to study in a, in a New York City. And one day, it was a Wednesday, we went to the church. And now my pastor is going around laying hands and prophesying over people. And now my pastor went to my friend and he released a prophetic word. And that prophetic word was so encouraging and so empowering him. And it was kind of saying that the Lord is so proud of you because you do so well. It's that kind of positive things when, when the Lord is kind of acknowledging your greatness. And... Uh, when when the, my pastor uh, uh, went to the other person and the, the uh, event was finished and we walked out, now my friend coming to me and telling me this. Uh, he he was oh, oh, I mean he was on the state when he almost left the church. I have to tell you this. So his spirit wasn't really. He was tired in spirit and in everything. So he wasn't in a great condition. So when we walked out to, uh, from the church, he comes to me and telling me, Peter, do you think this, this man is saying what God says to him? I said, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean remember when, when he prophesied this, I prophesied that. Uh, and also word of knowledge is a really improvement, word of knowledge, because, you know, that's happened already. And you remember those stuff. So we... And, and then he said, yeah, but he came to me today and then he prophesied something and and it absolutely wasn't true. And um, it didn't resonate with me. In fact, uh, you know, my state, I'm about to almost leave the church and I, I was doing so many terrible things and he prophesied completely different. And I remember that kind of, you know, we, we are best friend and we standing outside and I, I, that kind of, was the right word, disappointment, because bear in mind, I was 17 years old, very naive, very fi on fire, and kind of listening to him, and I feel like the enemy is slapping me, then saying, oh, really? Is, is he prophesied? Is he released word? And wasn't the Lord? We have no knowledge again, that, you know, the, the can come from your heart or from the enemy. Prophecy, prophecy is just prophecy. That's all we know. And I remember the level of disappointment, what uh, my friend shared with me, how much made me hard uh, after that to receive for a time. And I was struggling because that was the first time when I realized the man of God is still man. The man of God is not God itself. The man of God is still man. That was the very first lesson which kept when i learned this is kept me in my spiritual journey in life i'm telling you this experience saved my future i tell you why because uh when i learned this uh then god started to use me to pray for my pastor in a way that he started to show me his weaknesses but 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 again, I'm 17 years old, I'm on fire, he's my hero, and suddenly the Lord's showing me things. And I was like, no way, I rebuke you, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. But then I, I you know, as, as you're rebuking even, unfortunately, the good things were the whole Lord showing, you're realizing it's not going, it's still there, and in fact, it's happening sometimes. You, you're like, okay, so Lord, what do you want me to do? I want you to pray. 
I'm showing you because I want you to pray. No one else knows I showed you. So I started to pray and I understood the man of God is still a man and nobody is perfect on this earth. Now, when I understood this, suddenly the Lord is showing me in 2 King 5, Ge uh, Gehazi. I think I taught this already in, in, in here in the 300 because, that, I mean, this teaching, I love saving teachings for me. I heard, heard from the Holy Spirit and I kept it. So now Gehazi is with, the prof, is with Prophet Elisha and Prophet Elisha wasn't a joker, right? Even the Bible, when, when you're reading the, the stories of Elisha, you know, double portion and, and the miracles and signs and wonders is like mind blowing. You know, sometimes you're reading the Bible and you're shaking just to reading. That's how powerful is the prophet. Now imagine that walking with Elisha uh, as a servant, you know, Gehazi was is a first expression, I believe. I strongly believe, you're hearing me, not the Lord, I strongly believe he was like my 17-year-old version. Like, oh, this man can do anything. There is no impossible for this man. He was, I believe, Gehazi was like mind-blowing and, you know, because of the man of God. So, uh, and uh, suddenly, Gehazi does something. And my interpretation, please allow me to share with you, my interpretation, uh, why Gehazi was brave enough to do something in the presence of a prophet who sees uh, and prophesy death and life out of people, like, you know, it's crazy. How he was brave enough to do, I think because Gehazi understood what I understood that the man of God, no matter how great is, is still a man. And Gehazi understood even Elisha sees in parts. So even Elisha has blind spots. Even Elisha doesn't see everything in 24-7. Oh my God, we're not recording. Do we record in this? Oh, well, whoever was, thank you so much to you, you press that recording button because I'm I'm just so excited to share this with you because that's when I'm sharing this part, these things, I'm sharing my heart. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm already traveling in time. I'm, I'm still 17. So when Gehazi has this understanding uh, that, you know, and it's to be honest, listen, people of God, this is very hard to handle. When, when you are like me, when you, it, 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 when you full heartedly love your pastor or your leaders, and suddenly you understand he's not 24 7 sees, he's not 24 7 the man of God, he's still a man who does mistakes, you know. And I believe, I believe Gehazi saw uh, the, the man's side of Elisha. And he understood, even though he's a great prophet, he doesn't see anything. And I believe that was encouraging and give enough braveness to Gehazi to cheat and lie to the man of God. Because he understood even, even the biggest prophet, prophet in, in Israel uh, doesn't know anything. He's still a man. And the Bible says when uh, uh, Naaman was healed uh, from his uh, uh, sickness, from his skin disease, then Elisha said, I don't want to accept anything. Please just go away and I just bless you. And the Bible says when Gehazi uh, noticed this, uh, he was like, okay, my servant, my, my master didn't ask anything. Let me run after him and ask. So he went after uh, uh, Naaman and said, oh, my master sent me. And my master says, just arrived two prophets from the hill country. And can you give for these two uh, silver and, and, uh, and clothes, please? And he's coming, Naaman, as happily handling to, to Gehazi. And as Gehazi going back, now he's, he's hiding the stuff, what he received. And when Elisha asking him, where have you been, my dear? Where have you been? And then he says, uh, 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 your servant haven't been anywhere. And the very fact 
that Gehazi said this to Elisha that tells me he has a knowledge that prophets see in parts. Because is if he would know that this is a prophet who, like Jesus, Jesus was a different case, right? I mean, we can praise Jesus for for forever. The level he was a prophet of the prophet. There was no hiding things in front of Jesus. So, but Elisha was seeing in parts. Now Gehazi was brave enough to see, to lie to the to the eyes of the one of the greatest prophets, but. His unluck was that in this time he saw it wasn't a blind spot. And he said, my heart went with you. And now this is which is which, which coming on to your life. But why was why he was so brave? Because he understood the man of God still man. Now, the reason I started with these two story, because dear family, uh, you have to understand who you're seeing now is a man. I'm not saying because I did something, I didn't do anything. Uh, I'm just saying that if this experience and revelation saved my life, you might have to hear it as well. That's why me and my wife, even Prophet Tommy said, oh, Peter and Andra, you are not like African uh, preachers. You are, you are, uh, you know, people can come to you. People can, you know, say, oh, I think you should do better this or that. Because, because what we, what we're doing, we, we still uh, have an understanding how to honor your leaders. But at the same time, we understood we have to be able to make people see us as we are. If if we do something, then then we won't praise ourselves. My last week, my wife was um, saying in the church, I wasn't well. I was watching Netflix, and I love the fact that she said that, because that's transparency. That's help people to understand. Man of God is still man, and by these experiences, they will understand. Okay. He doesn't see 24-7. Okay, if if he says something as is not like that or doesn't is not uh, resonating with me, that means I heard the man but was in the spirit. And that's okay to you know to 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 have this period of life. And we want to make sure always to to have this and make it clear to people because that's that's the way how I was able to follow my uh, this, this, my pastor is with the Lord, and I have another spiritual father, and I was able to follow him without blinking because I understood he's a man of God with with mistakes and with with you know with with errors, and we all with errors. Now he's with the Lord as well now, and now I'm in rig. I'm following Prophet Tommy, and whatever you know, people can say me anything about him. I, I already learned when I was 17, man of God is still a man. So I'm not expecting that he, he should be perfect in 24-7. I have the grace and understanding if God can forgive me, then I can forgive him. Who am I to keep everything or watch him in any ways? Or, or you know, so I, I have this understanding and I want you to have that as well. Because in this way, you will never disappoint. Uh, because you understand and you respect your brothers and sisters or your leaders. Now, uh, that was the the my story from the past. And the reason I'm sharing this is because the Lord has told us that there will be the season when people will get offended. And offense is a is is a we we feel that, but actually offense is a trap from the from the hell. Because I just want you to remember something. Satan wasn't falling in to porno. Satan wasn't falling in to, to any addiction of drugs or alcohol. Satan was falling in for, of the scene of pride. And the root of offense is actually pride. So when you offend and without reason, the real root for it is always pride. 
I will I will try to show you from the scripture. But let let me say this: there is two type of offended people. One type of offended people who has the right reason, because you did something or you say something, and the person is offended. That's understandable. That's that's you know that is a reason behind. Now the second type is those who think you did something to them, but you didn't, but they think. And because they think, they still go almost to the first type, which is the end result is offended. And offense is, is a really demonic uh, tool from the hell because offense can really manipulate and take you completely to the other side of, of the road. Because remember when Peter, Apostle Peter, talked to Jesus and Jesus sharing his burdens and Jesus says, I have to die, people are going to kill me and, you know, all this happening to me. And now suddenly Peter says, no way, this cannot happen to you, Lord. And now Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, because you are offense to me. And why Jesus said, uh, he, later he's explaining, because you're thinking on man's things uh, and man's interest instead of, instead of God's interest. So anytime you, you offend, offended, the reason you offended because you're thinking on man, in, man, man things, not the interest of heaven. You're thinking on what the other person said, what the other person did. So earthly things, you, you're offended because your focus is on earthly things. It cannot happen. You're thinking on man things, not, uh, not uh, what is important for God, what is, what is important for heaven. And um, there, is a, there is a special spiritual nature of offense. Because I believe you all are in a very strong uh, a, a stage of faith that I don't think so that a handsome man or a beautiful woman can take you out from, the, from, from Christ. You will rebuke that demon. You might even slap that woman and say, don't even come near to me again. That's, I, that's how I see you. But offense... Offense is something else. Offense is a scene which, which is very sneaky. Pro, I have a conversation with Prophet Tommy. And Prophet Tommy saw a vision while we had the conversation. And he saw that in London, there is a very specific attack, a witchcraft attack, which rooted in offense. And he, he said, this is a witchcraft. So what you're dealing with is witchcraft. How is manifesting people offending? offending? That's what he saw. That's why I'm, I went to study this. Uh, so, and the Bible says something interesting in Luke 17, 1. Uh, the Bible says, it cannot avoid encountering offense. That's what Jesus said in the Bible. He says, uh, uh, where, is, where is this word? I, I believe Luke 17, uh, 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 17, 1. Yes, 17, 1. Then said to the disciples, it is impossible, but to offense will come. So Jesus says it's impossible that somebody in your lifetime will not offend you. Offend will come. Everybody on this earth, Jesus said, impossible not to have encounter with offense. It's impossible, he says. It's possible to avoid to offend somebody, but the Bible says impossible that somebody will not offend you in your lifetime. So offense, what we're talking about, will come on us, will find us. The way how we react is, of course, depend uh, and determining the future. But offense will come in church, in marriage, in workplace, with your children, with your friends. Offense will come. 
offense uh, uh, broke great friendships, offense uh, broke uh, marriages, offense uh, broke destinies of peoples, offense growth, uh, brought uh, 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 people out, took out people from churches. So if we're not dealing, not learning how to deal with offense, and Jesus says that it's impossible to to not encounter with offense. Uh, that means if you don't know how to deal with it, we, we will meet with this spirit and it will take us over. So we cannot avoid to be offend, uh, to, to, to somebody offending us. Uh, the Bible, the, the scripture is very clear. It's impossible, he says. Now the problem is the enemy is manipulating that's why is is based is 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 in witchcraft the enemy is manipulating your feelings your point of view and even your behaviors through offense because when you are offended with something or with somebody suddenly you can you you feel self pity your emotions are changed you feel you feel bitterness you feel uh, angry. So all these things, all these things starting to manipulate your soul. And the level of manipulation uh, is as strong as witchcraft. Now, <clears throat> the Bible says that and 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 giving a very very straight understanding between offending and your spiritual growth. Because, because if you study the scriptures, you will see your spiritual life and the growth of your spiritual life goes as far as you have the ability to overcome offenses. If you're able to overcome offenses, you will grow. If you're not able to overcome offenses, you will stuck in that place where, where offense finds you. So, so I know you all want to grow, but you will encounter, according to Jesus, offense. And if you're able to overcome, you will grow. In the, in the day when you are not able to overcome, you stop growing. You stay there. Look what the Bible says uh, for, about the greatest prophet in the Bible who born for a woman. That is, his name is John. The Bible says when John was, uh, and listen to this, we're talking about John and Jesus, the two greatest men on, in the Bible. So when John saw Jesus and realized this is a lamb, I, I have a teaching on this, remember, when he realized this is a lamb, this is a Messiah, he was full with hope and joy. And even he, he released disciples because he watched Jesus and says, this is the lamb of God. And disciples went after Jesus and followed Master, where, where do you live? And then, uh, you know, and, and John was so hopeful because, oh, this is what I was preparing for. The man is here. It was among us. We didn't know, but right now he's here. And I am the voice. I am not even worthy to touch his sandal, but he's here. And all of a sudden, in a few scriptures later, he's asking, sending disciples, is he the one? The greatest prophet, is he the one? Because he disappointed in Jesus. Because Jesus, as a leader, wasn't, wasn't producing what he was expecting. When you have expectation from your leaders, but not understanding, no, even Jesus can stand in front of you. You will be offended by your leaders. I want, I want this sentence to burn into your heart. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because look what Jesus says. Go back to John. Tell this and this. This is what I'm doing. This is the miracles and signs and wonders that I'm releasing. And he's finishing with this. And, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Luke 7.23. Luke 7.23. Blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Do you know why Jesus said this? Because Jesus had an insight of John and the disciples had to go back to John 
and say, report what Jesus said. So what, what Jesus said, this is what Jesus said. These are the signs. These are the miracles. By the way, uh, you'll be blessed if you have no offense. The reason he said, because John was at the danger to be offended, to be offensed by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, if the Son of God offended disciples, if the Son of God was offended the disciple of the disciple of the disciples, what do you think your leader will do? Impossible, that says the Bible, that you will not encounter with offense. And the enemy, first, first plan of the enemy, be offended with leadership. Husband, be offended with your, your boss, with your manager. Be, be offended with, you, with your leaders. Be offended with authorities. Because once you're offended against authorities, your feelings and, and the manipulation, the witchcraft is already working and turning you away. So Jesus uh, sent a message to John that blessed is the one who, who are not uh, takes offense at me. In another word, John, I know you saw me and you, I know your expectation. And I know you think I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. But if you are offended, then the blessing will, will, will leave you. Because blessed are, blessed are the one who is not offended. Blessed are the one who is not offended. Let me work with my camera signal right now. Just a minute. Can you see me again? Okay, great. So blessed are the one who is not offended, Jesus says. So the fact that Jesus said means uh, the Son of God was disappointing disciples. John 6 uh, says, I believe 6, 66, 66 uh, then disciples left Jesus. He's, they, they were saying, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's something not resonating with me. And the Bible says they left. Now Jesus is watching the 12. Are you living as well? And Peter says, Lord, wh where else we can go? We have no B option. You are the only option. We're not going anywhere. But Jesus asked them because he saw so many people stop followed him. Why? Because Jesus, what he said, how he, he acted, it was offensive. Even John in the prison, he's in the prison. People about to kill him. All he can think, Jesus offended me. Jesus is the Messiah and he's, 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 not, he's not requiring my expectations. Because what Jesus do is somehow doesn't fit the picture. I have a different Messiah in my hand. My Jesus, my Messiah would come and, and has the sword and kill all the Romans. This Messiah is not killing, he's healing. And between killing and healing, there is a huge gap. So how, how are we going to come over? Even when, when even Jesus was healing the, the very people who was attacking them, Peter was taking up the ear and Jesus was healed. So the, the disciples was, were confused. One day you're asking sword, and now I'm acted with sword. Now you healed them. So Jesus is... Jesus was a type of leader that he was offending people. Well, wasn't he really? The enemy, the spirit of witchcraft, was always quick to work in the disciples' heart, in people's heart, to give any reason to be offended. Because offended in the spiritual realm is a special place. When you are offended, you willingly from your free will, you walk into a spiritual prison. And the key is with you. Nobody can lock that door. There is no power on this earth or heaven who can lock that door on you. But when you decide to offend and stay offended, 
You walk in the spiritual room, prison, and you lock the door and you're holding with two hands so nobody can take you out. And that's what the disciple experienced. And in that prison, there is the power of manipulation. There is a power of this depression. There is a power of separation. Because that prison is separating you from every good you're experiencing in, 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 in heaven. Separating you from your husband, from your wife, from everything. Don't you, don't you remember last time when you were offending, even if it was hard to speak to your loved one? Because you were offended. Even word doesn't is run away. It's like you have no tongue. You can't say anything. Because offense, offending is put you in a prison where the, you, you, your existing, who you are, is stopped. I will show you this from, from, a, from another angle uh, that, we, that, that you will see. And that uh, angle is pride. Because how you can be offended. Let me give you two. Just uh, We don't have much time. Let me give you just two uh, main points how you can get offended. Number one, entitlement. Very dangerous. Entitlement. So when you when you feel entitled or something, that's very easy to, to, to feel like, oh, I'm offended by people. Why? Because they didn't treat me. They didn't recognize me. According to what? According to your mind, what you have in your mind, entitlement. I am Apostle Peter. I stepped in the room and nobody greeted me. Let's say I'm stopped in the room where nobody knows who I am. Let me tell you, I was watching with Prophet Tommy. I was I was working in Nigeria, in USA, in Abuja, everywhere. And I was anointed as an apostle. Now I'm stepping into the meetings. I'm stepping into the rooms. Nobody came to me and say, Apostle Peter, I'm greeting you. If I would be a different person, I would say, oh, I, I've been offended because they don't even recognize that I am an apostle. They give chat to Prophet Tommy, but they never thought that I'm thirsty. They never thought I need something. They never shake hand with me. All, all cameras in on him. But because I have no entitlement, the enemy couldn't even say a word to me. I wasn't able to offend. But if I would have, entitlement will always bring you to the place of offendness because you think and you have in certain picture how people should treat you, greet you and behave with you. And uh, if is, is that not happening, you would say, I would deserve different. I would, I have a better authority. And the recognition is doesn't given to me. People doesn't recognize my beautiful voice. People doesn't recognize my gift. And that's why people even leaving church. They in love with the church. But because they've been offended, they decide to move on. Now they move on. But guess what? What they're not realizing, they not they, they not have a problem with the church. They have a problem because they willingly enter to a prison and that prison is in the spirit. It doesn't matter which church you go, the prison is still there. Until you're not getting, setting yourself free, then, then it, it, no matter where you go, offense will come, will, will find you. And will manipulate you because entitlement is just there. When I came to this country, I couldn't speak English at all. I had no entitlement. I was doing everything. Anybody can tell me everything. I was doing it because I have. I knew that I am nobody. So when you have when you have the mindset things that I'm nobody but Christ is, then you cannot be offend offended. But the problem is, we, we know too much who we are. I am an apostle. Even if you're not turning on your camera, I kick you out now. Even if, you, even if, if you're not smiling when I'm teaching, I, I, will, I will punish you. In Nigeria, there are men of God who even send curses on you. The, the cursing, you, you, you right, uh, Rukaya? You, you know that, right? They will yes, 
if you're not treating them well because they feel entitled. Now, the second one I want to share is pride. Oh my God, pride. That's the root, one of the one of the main root uh, for for being offended. Uh, and I I don't mind if you man or woman, young or old, there is something we have to deal with pride. Me personally, I am praying against a lot pride. I find myself, you hearing Peter, the flesh. I find myself, this Peter, very proud, very, very pride. Until the point, then, then I, I, I feel like, okay, where is this coming from? But the problem is the flesh generally, naturally producing this proudness. Now, remember what I said. Satan was not struggling with anything else. No pornography, no alcohol, uh, nothing else but pride. So Satan learned... If I find Christians who are very strong with doing the series of pornography teaching, and so many of you just, you know, saying, okay, that's not for me, I'm good. But Satan find out, even if he's not there, pride can, can somehow be there. Because I tell you what is pride. Pride is when you're cutting your nail every week. If you're cutting, it's gone. If you're not cutting, it's go, grow back. I remember when I was playing guitar. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Um, who's, who's playing here anything which is with strings? Anyways, don't worry. So now, when I was playing guitar and I, I learned finger style, I was uh, leaving my nails to grow so I can I can do the... the you know the music with my with my fingers with my nails so nails are if you're not cutting them is growing you can't say i'm christian please don't grow now if anyone was able to do that let me know because i don't like actually cutting my nails there was a time remember believe or not my wife was cutting my nail i had my best time in my life she came every week i have appointment with her i'm not i'm i'm truly saying she cut my nails and I enjoyed it, but now it's back to me uh, for several reasons. I like to do my shape and everything, even if it's not straight. But proudness, exactly like that. No matter how sent you are, no matter how much you're fasting, proudness is like your nails. If you're not dealing with it, if you're not cutting off, it will find you. That's how the flesh working, because proudness is in our flesh. It's not in your spirit, but is in your flesh. It goes to your soul and you cannot get rid of it. And you cannot cut off your fingers for, for you to don't have to cut deal with your nails anymore. Because if you cut your fingers off, then, you know, that's something else. That, that, that's what we call, I don't know, stupidity or whatever. You cannot deal with your fingers because of the, because of the nails. You have to deal with your nails in a weekly basis. So that's proudness. Satan felt because of proudness. He became proud. Why? Because he was beautiful. He was one of the most beautiful angels, archangels. His beauty was amazing. And he saw that. And he understood, I am and I'm entitled when I'm walking in. Those angels see my glory, see my worship, hear my worship, see my light, how I'm shining. He was entitled. And because of that, he became proud. And guess what happened? Proudness turned Satan from that beautiful archangel to a nasty being. Now, he is the most nasty creature on, 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 on the spiritual realm. Because proudness is change you. The kind, sweet person can become nasty and fighting. Now, that beautiful face who you watched before, let's say you have a, a beautiful wife or, or, or a really uh, a handsome husband. Now, that handsome husband, as I am to my Andrea, can 
turn to something else, no matter how 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 nice is my face, how shiny my teeth. If if proud getting me, Andrea will get a different Peter, a nasty one, because the the most beautiful creature after after Jesus. The, the most beautiful one, even the Bible says, your beauty, you choose beauty. Satan falls because of pride. So pride is the root to be offensive, to, to be offended. Now, there is another thing. Uh, we don't have time much, but there is another thing that when you sense that kind of unfairness. When you feel like the church or your leader or your wife or your husband or your manager is unfair with you. And when you sense that, you feel offended because you would say, oh, they treated me unfairly. Or even the church leaders uh, are not, not really uh, uh, believing in me. They don't see my gift. They don't see that I am worthy. They don't value me. They, not, they don't recognize me enough. They, they actually, they hurting me. And I feel bitter now. And, and I feel like uh, uh, the church is just looking over me and they don't value me. So now, when you hear all these, there is a sign that you're entitled, you have pride inside you, and you're sensing unfairness. And that could be, in some cases, right. So, so don't, I said, there is two types of people who can be offended. One is without reason, one is with reason. But the problem is, the, the prison, when you walk in, when you are offended, doesn't ask you, uh, that there is no A prison and B, B prison for being offended, then oh, we have a lighter prison for those who's offended with reason, and we had the harder uh, 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 place to those who have no reason but, but yet offended. There is just one place. And trust me, offended, when you're offended, that's a spiritual state. That's a spiritual place when you walk in willingly and you stay there. And you cannot come out until you not, you not pay off, you, until you not sorted out the things. You stay there. Even Jesus said, you won't come out. I can't bring you out. You have to because you have the key. In fact, the door is open. It was always open. You just locked it from inside. There is no, there is no look on outside. It's inside, so it's you have to deal with it. So, and that's that's when you feel like I'm not recognized in church, and uh, I I I feel rejected, and and suddenly in this stage something happening with with sense, they demanding respect. Can I tell you, we don't have much men in here, but I am a man. And I will, I will put my face to the camera. I was demanding so many times respect from my wife, even though she's giving me brilliantly. I think the best wife on this earth is my wife, Andrea. Even prophetic words in, in her birthday came to her that she should write even a book, How to Be a Wife. Because the way how she's respecting me, the way how she's honoring me, is, is, is another level. But still, you know, pride, I told you, my nails, pride says never enough. So sometimes as a man, I would say, oh, I am, I am not respected. I demand now. I'm commanding you, respect me more. Even, and, and the reason is because you already, the enemy has already witchcrafted you. The enemy manipulated you. The enemy already told you lies, and now you feel it because the enemy plays with your soul. Cannot touch your spirit, but your soul is, is quite there. So now you offended, and now you're demanding respect. And, and, and when you demanding respect, thank you so much for this kind message, Sharon. She, she texted me that, uh, uh, that appreciate that I shared it. 
I, I like to be transparent. I like to be transparent. It's necessary in this time. It's necessary, so necessary. So, uh, so as I as you are in this place now, you're demanding respect, and when you're demanding respect, you completely lost the 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 soft heart of Jesus. Jesus never demanded respect. The Jesus said, "I came to this earth to serve." He didn't say, I came to this world so people can have somebody finally who they can respect. He said, I came to this earth to serve, not, the, not people serving me. So when, you, when you're demanding respect in argument, who, who, who are you to talking to me like this? You're demanding respect. Moses wasn't demanding respect. Moses went to his face. He did not say a word. He went to his face. God stepped in. And God said, now God, if somebody has the right, God has the right. Who you are to speak like this with my, with my friend, with my Moses? All of you, both of you, Aaron, Miriam, immediately repent. God can say that Moses went to his face. He didn't demand. When you're demanding respect, just let you know that's already a combination of proudness, entitlement, and 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 that's witchcraft already. Because by your behavior, you manipulating your environment so that they respecting you. That's witchcraft. Because witchcraft is manipulate your environment for your sake, for your good, for your benefit. So never ever demand respect. When people are not respecting you, don't fight with them. The Bible says, even if somebody treating you unwell, you should bless. The Bible never says, when somebody is treating you unwell or not respecting you, the Bible not saying, ask fire on them. That was the spirit in the disciples, which was a, a different spirit. Jesus said, you really want to ask fire from the from the village because they not respected me and not accepted me and not let me in. And the disciples said, yeah, we can ask. Do you want Jesus? We can ask right now. Jesus said, go away. You don't even know which spirit you're operating with. The problem is this spirit is very sneaky. Even trained disciples are not realizing. Take a prophetic sight to realize I'm demanding now respect. This is another spirit. This is not the Holy Spirit. So, and uh, by doing this, you try to control every situation, demanding, demanding, uh, and and forcing out respect. Now, the reason I share this with you because the Bible says again, Luke was it Luke seventeen one, if I remember right. The Bible says you must encounter with offense. Woe to that who is causing you that offense. That you know that that's the other side. But for you, you will you will encounter with offense. I believe you did already. The fact that you here you handled somehow. Now, if offense is recurring in your life, you have to check your heart. Why is it always happening? What what is the root inside me? Is it entitlement? Is it proudness? Is it something from my childhood? Is it something how my my dad or my family uh, did in when I was young? How can I get rid of this this uh, this this issue in my life? Because I keep offending, uh, no matter what, every week at least once. That's recurring. Then you have to go deep and pray, Lord, what is it? Show me. Let me get rid of. Because again, you cannot grow. You can grow as, as much as you're able to forgive, as much as you're uh, able to move on from offense and not stay. Because offense is like a glue. It, it will glue you in one place. You cannot move. And once you not move, the enemy can localize you. The enemy can find you. But when you're moving, Jesus said, I am about to move. I am not, I am not allowed to stay. I have to move uh, and preach until I'm finished. Jesus was in move. So dealing with, with, with the roots of offense, again, 
uh, you have to see what are the roots. Why is always happening to me? What can I do different? Do I feel those things what we were uh, 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 mentioning? And if, if that's the case, sometimes you need deliverance because, because this is a spirit. It's, it's, you feel like a feeling, but trust me, behind is a spirit. And as Prophet Tommy was identifying a spirit of witchcraft, that's, that's a spirit from witches and, and it's, it takes you uh, and it, it brings you to witchcraft because by offending, you're able to manipulate everything. So refuse, refuse to, to, to offense. Now, one of the greatest things uh, is to say to your heart and train your heart to desire to follow Jesus Christ. Because when you, when you train your heart to follow Jesus, your focus will be on Jesus. That means you will not seek followers but you will seek how to follow Jesus you will not seek how many people I can be influenced how many people clapping me how many people follows me how many people honoring me because you'll be too busy too busy to, with the thought how can I how can I worship more Jesus how can I follow more Jesus and you know when you're following <laughs> right we were in Nigeria listen you will love this story we were in Nigeria. Now, Mr. Soji is a well-trained driver. And in Nigeria, if anybody drove in this team in Nigeria, then I, you have my respect. When we landed in Nigeria, Mr. Soji took us from the airport to the house. We were almost dying in the car. We were shocked. We were shaking. And we, uh, we felt like we are in the movie, which we, which we just want to switch off anyways. Now, Prophet Tommy asking me, because we were short on drivers and we have two cars, Peter, can you drive? I said, well, what do you, do you want me to drive in this country? First of all, my driving license is not allowing me to drive there, right? <laughs> because I have European driving license. But driving license is a small matter, the traffic. And I don't know if you if you heard how to, that there's a special style to drive when you are in... Uh, in when two cars you know goes in combo or i don't know what's the right word in in team you know when first car goes the second one goes the third one goes and and you cannot break that so you have to be very near to the first car because in nigeria if you leave a little bit gap then two motorbike and three car will go there convoy convoy so we had to learn how to drive in convoy so mr soji give me a quick training peter you have to drive this you have to push and you know bear in mind these are expensive so big cars now she's telling me everything my wife's sitting next to me because we have a syrian to press so we can give the sign and everything but in nigeria it doesn't matter people are not scared like europe from syrian in here, when you hear hear that uh, siren or the light, blue light, you scared. In Nigeria, they're laughing. Anyway, my wife sitting next to me, she has the remote to switch on the siren. And then I'm shaking because I'm taking out Prophet Tommy to the town. And, you know, uh, I think he was sitting in another car. I took someone else anyway. So I'm about to drive. And I was shaking and I was like, Jesus, what is happening to me? How, 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 do I, how do I go to in Nigeria to drive? But I had to. And, and I had to learn how to drive, how to move on that area. And that was, that was something I was, I remember I was quite often shaking after driving. But some, later on, I was quite confident. Even the driver said, Peter, you're doing now very well. Even you're giving the, the hand sign through the window to people. And you, one day an officer stopped me and I have no driving license. Thanks God. He saw that, uh, you know, I'm a white man. He thought I'm rich. And he, instead of asking my driving license, he said, can you, give some any anything to me any, anything you want to bless me so thanks that he didn't ask my license but yeah so the reason i'm saying this uh because you have to develop a skill and you have to develop a certain way how to avoid and how to come out from of to being offended how to come out from that place
And if you're not developing now, this will find you. And no matter how much you love me, one day you will be, you will be offended by me. Because if Jesus was offended, John, and if Jesus lost half of his disciples, uh, more than half, uh, because on that day the Bible says so many uh, stopped to follow him, who do you think I am? Who do you think the leaders in this room are? It will come. One day you will feel rejected. One day you will feel, oh, Apostle Peter doesn't look on me. Apostle Peter doesn't, doesn't realize my gift. So forget about uh, for, uh, uh, watching who's recognizing you or not. Learn to follow Jesus. And, and as I was in Nigeria, I learned I'm watching front. I don't care what is behind because I have to follow Mr. Soji in, in the convoy. I had no time even to, to blink. I said to my wife, my wife, watch, watch the blind spot. Tell me when I can turn the... We were driving together, I'm telling you. We, we did it together. Prophet Tommy was laughing anyway. So you cannot watch back because if you watch back, you already went to Mr. Soji, you crashed the car, million, million foreign cars. So you when you follow, you're too busy to watch who's following you. So one of the things to overcome offense, desire to follow, not, not you to be followed. Desire to follow Jesus. That should be your main desire. Not, don't desire any recognition. Don't desire anybody to follow you. Don't desire anybody to honor you. Today in church, when I'm going to church, Ilonka being there in that church. Uh, the reason I'm saying Ilonka because he's her two uh, son, Danik, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, what's his name? I wanted to say it quickly. Don't tell him. Hi. I didn't know his name. Uh, 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 Danik and help me. Kai. Kai. If you tell me I didn't know his name, I will delete you. I will block you from all of my social media. I will delete you because I love him so much. <laughs> so these two came to, to the UK and they came to church. And immediately they were on the floor uh, hiding cables, putting uh, 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 the cables in order. They were working. But the reason they were doing, because I was doing as well. I'm not playing apostles in the church. I'm serving them. Sometimes people coming to me, Apostle Peter, you shouldn't do this. You know, you should you should just sit. Even after worship, you can just come in and, you know, just, you know. And I said, no way. I'm here to do it. And I, I'm here to be part of the worship. And I'm here to fight with the cables, fight with, with the speakers, everything. Because, because I don't want people to follow me. I want... I want myself to follow Jesus as much as I can. If that drawn other people and if people follow me, I will say, follow me as I follow Christ. But my, my focus is on Christ, not on you, uh, if you're following me or not. And do the same. And you cannot be offended. If you forget, text me something, i am not be offended because my focus on Jesus, not on my phone. If somebody not recognizing my gift, I don't mind because be going to the to the to church to to lift up the church with our gift, not the church lift us up. And unfortunately, people go to places they waiting for the place to lift them up. But God gave you a gift to lift up the place. It's always like that. God is giving you gifts so your gift can lift up the place. But what we're waiting for, the place must lift up us. The place, at, and this, that's what Jesus said, you're waiting for the best place. You, you, stand, you like sitting on the front. You like make your clothes shiny and, and wide. And, and Jesus is against it. So we have to find a balance, we leaders, how to let people to honor us and how to tell them, oh, don't do that with me. I am like you. And I, I, think, I think I find a healthy balance. But again, I'm always cutting my nails. Because pride, pride can took me to the other side. And I, suggest, I advise you to do the same. 
do the same. Now, the second one, desire to follow, deny yourself, deny yourself. If somebody who denied himself cannot be offended anymore. Because denying yourself means you're denying your feelings. You're denying uh, 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 and, and you're not anymore developing of that pampering thought that somebody told you something and you're pampering yourself. Oh, it shouldn't happen like this. If you're denying yourself, you will be like, I don't care. I don't have time for this. Deny yourself. You're praying a lot. That, Lord, I just want to become your servant. Who, who, who prayed that? I prayed. I prayed so many times. I prayed. I prayed that prayer every time. Lord, I just want to be your servant. Now, finally, God makes you a servant, and now you're angry. God, why am I, why am I people looking, looking at me like, like servant? They, they're telling me, do this and do that, and they're not recognizing me, and they're not giving me any, any pain because they the handling line like as a servant but god goes like but you were praying for it now i blessed you because you were asking and now you're angry because i made you a servant so what do you really want to be honest god make me a master that that's our secret that, that that's what so many christian held in his heart asking to to say god make me a servant but you know what does it mean god Servant means master. So when I say servant, you should know your place. Make me a master. That's what we're praying. Because when God finally makes you a servant, now you're offended. Because servant has no recognition. The Bible, even Jesus said, when you servant and you did all that, so why, why, why are you waiting me to clap you? You did what is necessary. Because you servant. It isn't Jesus says. Now you're praying to be servant. And now you're waiting against Jesus' word. Jesus said, if you are servant, don't wait any recognition. Don't wait. But now you, you're servant now and you're waiting recognition from your leaders. Call you three times a week. Praise you because you did something. Or, 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 or let, let the church clap because you were singing. Or let your, yet let your wife open the door for you because now you're apostle. Or let your, let your wife stand up when you're coming through the door because now the, the man is coming. Because you're not denying yourself. And you, but when you servant, have you seen when servant come? I see in Nigeria, we have, we have two, uh, two servants in the house. I didn't even know their name for long. Anything they did, I, I always said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I realized in Nigeria, they don't even say thank you for them. Because it's common sense, they're serving. Now in church, if somebody do something in church and the pastor doesn't say thank you, uh, now you see your life, pastor. You, you wait for me and I'm, gonna, I'm not even coming until you're not texting me at least thank you. So that's witchcraft. That's the revelation that Prophet Tommy gave me. Offense is coming from a spirit of witchcraft because offense is manipulating the room. He told my wife, uh, Andrea, we're going to generate in the room uh, a hot topic discussion and your, your job will be to stand up as you're offending and walk out from the room. Nobody know. Just Prophet Tommy, me and Andrea. So we had this discussion in the group. It was like 20 people. And suddenly my wife uh, said something because he Prophet Tommy said, you, you have to act like you're offended. So Andra said something opinion about it. And she said it directly opposite. So people can say, no, no, it's not. And then my wife acted like offended and walked out from the room. The room was freezing. And then Prophet Tommy said later, you know what happened? Andrea became the leader of the room because even the leader lost the word. Everybody was watching and thinking on Andrea. And what the leader did, because he didn't know that it happened, the leader walked out to Andrea. And when the leader went out, Prophet Tommy stood up and said, now, do you see, we left in the room without leader. Why? Because Andrea became a leader. Even the leader went after, after her. 
So when you are offending, you you demanding to be a leader of and control of the things what you're offending with. And that's witchcraft. That is manipulation. Because in on that way, my wife, because Prophet Tommy asked, was manipulating the leader. The leader stopped the, uh, speaking, left the room, went after Andrea. And Prophet Tommy said, she became a leader. So when you're offending, when you're offended, you're stepping in a place of witchcraft because you're becoming a leader of, uh, try to become a leader. And you know what Prophet Tommy said? The leader came back. You shouldn't even go out because as a leader, you can't leave the room. Let her to be offended. Let her to deal with it. Once he's over, she can come back. You, you can deal with it. But as a leader, you can't leave the room. That's a spirit of offense. Can I, can I, have you seen churches when leaders been put in the corner because, because key persons are offended by the leaders? And almost put in the corner. Pastor, you did this and this. You can't do this. I'm offended. And next time, pastor stepping in is even scared to get to scared to say anything because he knows if I'm say something, they will offend it and they become a leader of the place. Especially when the person has a little bit of influence, you're done. So that's the that's the uh, that's that's my message for you today. And the reason we said because Prophet Tommy said it will come is here already. Is here already. It's already here. We're already fighting against it. And remember, any leader, any lead, I want you to remember this. Any leader, when he's new, is praised. Well, in, in good circumstances. When Jesus was new to John, John praised Jesus. When Jesus became a little bit more familiar and Jesus did something and John didn't like it, he said, are you really the one? Do you, do you understand how offensive was John's question towards Jesus? The creator of the universe walking on the earth. And somebody flesh, dust, asking the creator of the universe, are you really the one? Do, do you know how offensive is this question? It came from the hell. Are you really the one? Or shall we wait for someone else? Because it looks like you are not. So the reason I'm saying because you will experience this. And I became your leader. Whoever feels like I am your leader, I'm talking to you. Whoever not feels yet, but you on the pathway, you will experience it. Now, remember, Jesus became a leader for people. And people were praising in the first place and crucifying later. Because there is a spirit against leaders. That's why the Bible says, when you have leaders, when you have teachers, give double honor. Because if you have one honor, that will gone. It will go. You have, to, you have to have another one in case the first one go. You still be able to. So I become your leader. I become leader in London and in Europe. Can I tell you what the enemy does? They celebrated me. They, they welcomed me well. But I can see the future already. They will ask, are you really the one? And I will say, Blessed are those who are not offended by me. Because that's what happened to Jesus. It's happened with the high quality of that man, that son of God, Jesus. Who do you think will, 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 who I am? It will, not, it will happen to me. I, you will feel offended by me. You will feel unsafe under me. You will feel like, I don't know if this is the one or not. Paul says, when I'm going to you, going to see you, God humble me. God will humble me among you. I keep hearing this from the Holy Spirit since weeks, almost a month now. God is going to humble me in front of you. You know why? God will test your heart. Are you really follow this man because you see me 
or are you just follow because of benefits? And if the benefits doesn't support you anymore, you forget him. I'm telling you the test is coming. God is using me for that. And it's painful. You know why? Because God is humbling me. I find out, listen, I already know the Holy Spirit at least this much. I know when the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. I was standing in front of people. The Holy Spirit shut my mouth. I was, I was without words. I said, Lord, you can't do this. So I spoke something, something rubbish. I mean, when I say rubbish, I mean my own thought. It wasn't the God, wasn't God's spirit. I was doing a service. I, I sat down. I said, Lord, what did you do with me? The Lord said, I shut your mouth. I humbled you because I want to try them. I want to see them if they be able to 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 support to be able to follow even though they are not they didn't get the benefit because i don't want people who is here for benefit i want people who is here because i sent you and we stepped in the season when god is humbling me it's 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 painful i have to cut my nails more i'm telling you dear 300 i love you so much my heart i'm pouring out my heart always to you first and then if I have more strength, I do the church as well. But in here, I do. I, I really, I'm sometimes holding back myself in church. But in here, I'm, I'm letting out. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for people from church who I really love, who I really trust to come here. And they will come. But if they're not, I, I mean, I don't mind. Again, I'm not, I'm not denying. I'm, I'm not feel entitled. You should listen to me. You understand me? So I, I will not be offended if nobody come from church to listen to Apostle Peter. I'm happy if you come. But if you decide not to come one day, I'd be happy to bless you. So so, uh, so that's, that's, that's something which, which we're entering in. Be ready. Be ready to see your leaders naked, being beaten by others, by Romans, by Jews. Be ready to, to listen to your information from your leaders, from the Pharisees, from those who's high in, 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 in God. I know people already started to speak about rig in prophetic movements like big names. Even when I heard I was shaking, I had to come to pray. So, but be ready because God will never do something before testing it. And I spoke with Prophet Tommy. I said, Prophet Tommy, that this is just a testimony in my heart is burning so much. I, I don't even have fear because what we're going to birth in, 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 in the 300 in UK, it's going to influence everything, not just Europe, even the world. But there is a stronghold first of all. And that strong call is try to do anything, not let us in. But the strong call is already manifesting. People who were respecting me, who were fearing me, now suddenly they don't even, they cannot control their mouth. They, they're speaking out things and they, they're scared. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry I said to you this. I said, no, no, it wasn't you. It was a spirit inside you. It was always there. You just hide it. But now we can deal with it. So the anointing is on us and people manifesting, sometimes manifesting as, a, as you see on YouTube, you know, those demon uh, castings out. But sometimes they manifest, they cannot control their mouth. They, they're speaking and then they're apologizing. They're listening what they're saying. So that's the season where we are. Let me pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bless my loved one. I bless my loved one. Lord, you gave me this, this group. You gave me the 300 to comfort me and to hide me. So anytime the enemy is accusing, I feel like you're hiding me among these people. Anytime, Lord, the enemy is, is up and try to uh, find me, he cannot find me. because The Lord is just reminding me when Jesus was among the disciples, the enemy couldn't identify who Jesus is. 
It's needed. Jesus needed to be betrayed, needed to be short with Jesus. And the Lord is telling me, 300, you became uh, like the disciple to Jesus. When I'm, when I'm among you, the enemy cannot see me. The enemy cannot find me. So actually you became my hiding place. You became like very resonant to me. So the enemy cannot say, okay, is this very Peter now? I just want to, I just want to slap him. I just want to kill him. And the enemy cannot find me because of your prayers, because of our covenant. I hope you understand your importance, what, what you are and who you are right now. So Lord, I just bless them. I just bless them because they became a shield. They became a shield to shield be a shield around uh, leaders to become a shield around people and the lord says 300 listen to me well the lord says in this season i'm going to make you and i'm going to use you as a shield and i want you to step to the gap and become a uh, protectors of the leaders the lord says i calling you this season to protect my leaders because my leaders is without sometimes so many of them i see them without protection so the lord says i trained you and i stood you up and i and i made you ready in this time so you will be protected of the leaders i see this in the spirit and i see even conversation you will you will stop people and say i'm so sorry can you not speak like this about my leaders it's hurting me you're paining me i will cry if you continue please i see this kind of conversation and i see in the spirit you standing there and 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 god is going to use you in this season for that so Lord, I just bless these people, but right now I cut their nails in the name of Jesus. I cut their nails now, but I train them, Lord, to cut their own in the future. Let them cut their nails. Let them bite their nails in the name of Jesus. Let them deal with those nails every single day. So no proudness can, can have place in these people. No entitlement can, can have place in these people. No any kind of agenda can take in these people because they will be followers of you. They will not looking for followers because they will be too busy to follow you. And the Lord says, if you follow me and focus on me, I will show you things that you never see. But if you are looking for followers and watching followers, you will miss the mystery of God. You will miss the things that I'm, I'm, I'm about to show you. So don't, don't put your focus behind and on people, on followers, but put on focus on me so I can show you things because remember the scripture the bible says when 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 jesus uh rebuking satan uh to peter and says you are offense to me because you are not setting your mind on god interests right now i feel the power of the holy spirit i'm going to touch in the spiritual realm your mind because the bible said jesus saw satan and satan was resetting peter's mind and the bible says you are not sit setting your mind on god's interest but on man Right now, I removing that curse. I removing that manipulation. I remo removing that witchcraft, which is causing you to, to your mind to focus on man's right now even though if your marriage is in trouble even though if your kids is misbehaving even though if any kind of man around you is doing to you anything you will not lose focus in the name of jesus because the lord says the enemy is using man's right now around you to take your focus Focus from God interest to man's and that's what happened with Apostle Peter and it will not happen to you in the name of Jesus I will cut your mind right now and I will set your mind for the interest of God but not man because anytime your interest and your, your focus is on man you're actually manifesting Satan will because Peter was manifesting Satan's will, and the manifestation was you setting your mind on, on, on not on God's interest, but on man's. In the name of Jesus, I'm resetting this mind. I'm resetting this mind.
or God interest, not anymore ours, not anymore man's. We denying ourselves, we denying everything in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord, I'm releasing deliverance in this room from the spirit of offending, to be offended in the name of Jesus, those recur recurring offending in the name of Jesus in churches, in families, in workplaces, on the street. That spirit, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and I will send you, I will send you back to, the, to, to that pit where you are from in the name of Jesus. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm also praying against pride in the name of Jesus. I'm also praying against pride and entitlement in the name of Jesus. I rebuking you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Purify this group so they will be able to be shielded against this spirit. Because until they are not purified, they cannot be a shield of it, Lord. So purify them, make them ready. Lord, I prophesying the, 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 the most powerful sentence which being said on this earth it is finished it is finished Lord the work is finished I prophesying they are ready it is finished they are ready to become a shield in the name of Jesus next time when you go to pray just have this vision close your eyes and say visualize a, a, a shield and say Lord I become a shield for your leaders I become a shield a prayer warrior I am standing on the gap in the name of Jesus, Lord, I bless these people. I bless these people. And I love them. I love them in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for being with me. I felt the urgent. I felt the urgent to come and share this with you. We, we were so tired today. We hardly slept in the last, last few days. But I, even my, me and my wife were like, I don't know if we can come today. I don't know. We, we, we have to cancel. But I felt the Holy Spirit urging me to come and share this with you. Oh. Uh, Ruyaka, your, your hand is raised. Would you like to say something? Are you muted? We can't hear you. Thank you so much for showing your love and care for prioritizing us today. I just want to... Um, testify to what you've said about us being a shield for our leaders. In the last three days, during my prayer time with the Lord, the Lord has always put it in my mind to uplift you. Come on. Prophetess wow. Andrea. Wow. Prophetess Andrea. Um, Apostle, um, Apostle Tommy and his wife. In the wow. last three days, when I... You know, I'm almost finishing. Sometimes I get up 2.30, I finish like to 5. But the thing says, stay back. Prophetess Andre, um, Apostle Peter, in the last three days, just to testify to wow. what, you, what you're saying. <laughs> I like this. When, when you say something and it's already happened, so they're not hearing new things, they're hearing confirmation. That's my favorite. Thank you so much to giving this feedback. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all of you. And I really feel a, a really, really special covenant between, between you and, and uh, my wife and, and myself. I really feel this in the spirit. And... Uh, and I don't think so the enemy after this teaching can come to you to be offended. But if you wouldn't cut your nail, it will happen. So it's just natural. You have to cut it. Please don't cut your finger because the Bible says the Lord is teaching my finger for the for fight. So I need your finger to fight, please. I need those pressure fingers. <laughs> and then and then but your nails, cut your nails. And not just that, you must know that we're praying for you and we're loving you so, so much. We might don't have the time to express this, but you are in our prayer. You are in, in our mind. And unfortunately, again, in this earth, we are limited. We don't have time and, and you know, opportunities to, to express this. But um, I'm just trying to say right now, and the opportunity to say how much we love you and appreciate you and uh, and i think we the lord really made amazing his plan that that we step to a covenant together uh, which which the bible says even if one is falling you know if they are together 
there, there's different case. And I think the Lord gave us it to each other. So whoever is, is weak or feel like I'm going to fall in the spirit, sometimes I realize that sometimes I'm praying in tongues and I'm praying for you. Mm. And sometimes I'm praying in tongues and I want to finish. As, as, as Rukaya said, I want to finish. And the Lord said, no, no, pray more. I said, but I feel I feel like I prayed out everything. No, no, you're now going to pray in tongues for them. For this, for this, for this. So I okay, Lord. If that's the case, I'm sitting core but I feel already pain in my body, my my joints, my neck. Uh, you know, your throat is dry. But the Lord is saying, No, no, you're praying for them now in tongues because you don't know what they're going through and you don't have the time to find out. But I know I just need I just need a vessel. And and trust me, be praying for you. And we love you so, so much. And we don't take this lightly because we understood uh, if, if David would be alone, he would be dead very soon. But the Bible says he had an army. If Gedeon would be alone, there would be no 300. That's the, that's the reason why it's called 300, not Gedeon. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your prayer. Love you, love you so much. Thank you for coming today. Love you. Thank you, Thank you. Bless 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 you.